Aircrete versus light clay straw or slip straw building. Which one do you think is going to be the winner? Basically, for those that don't know, what light clay straw building or clay slip building is, is basically a mixture of clay, just like you would use for pottery, where you have pure clay, it's been mixed with water to create a thick liquid, not so different than, say, chocolate milk. Uh, it's a thick co uh, it's a thick clay laden uh, liquid and this is applied it's mixed and it coats your straw and the reason you coat your straw is twofold one it provides a binder so that when you pack it into a form it'll actually hold together and two by coating the straw in clay you more or less stop the decomposition process and you make it more resistant to bugs that might want to eat it so first of all, if you haven't heard of light clay straw, what it is is a light coating of clay over straw. And this is packed into a form to form your walls. It's a very old building style. And, you know, of course, a lot like many other earthen materials, it's completely natural, it's non-toxic, and it can absolutely be free if you're willing to put the labor into it. And it doesn't require as much massive excavation of earth to get the clay to make the slip to coat the straw with. And now, of course, you find that there's a lot of mixers available where you can simply uh, mix your clay in with some water, turn on a pump, uh, and turn on a mixing drum, and you throw your straw in one end, it gets sprayed down, mixed and turned for you, comes out the other end ready to be packed into a form. <clears throat> now this is versus aircrete, where... Let's face it. Having an alternative building constructed for you can cost more than conventional construction, up to $250 per square feet. Building a 450 square foot house can cost as much as $90,000 to have a company build. Build it yourself and save $80,000. Do you want to build alternative homes for others as a professional? You could profit up to $70,000. The material of the building is immaterial slapping mud on a wall, ramming earth, stuffing a bag with dirt, or aircrete. These skills can be learned in a day or two. The real skill begins when you are ready to make your tiny house functional. Electric, solar, air conditioning, plumbing, flooring, or alternative waste water management. This is where many people fail to finish their homes or pay large sums of money to hire skilled labor. Others fail in the planning or logistic stages. They buy the wrong land, underestimate cost, do not know how to hire and manage unskilled labor, or fail to connect infrastructure. This is why we now offer the Terlingua Alternative Building School. Beginner or experienced builder, come learn how to build a tiny house from scratch. In far less time and expense than traditional paths of learning, you can learn and experience every skill you need. Now you can proceed with confidence to build the house and life of your dreams. And my favorite version of Aircrete is Aircrete casting over making blocks and cutting blocks, moving and stacking blocks. And so with Aircrete, you simply add six gallons of water, a sack of cement, and you turn on some foam with about four or five ounces of Drexel foam per uh, five gallon bucket. And you mix this together and you wind up with uh, this six cubic feet mix of aircrete that's quite insulating, only about 6% less insulating than a standard wall. Whereas the light clay straw mix actually is not very insulating at all, even though you might think it would be, the tests show that it comes out to about half that of a conventional wall. So if you need a house with a wall equivalent of a two by six in insulation or R13, you're gonna to have to build an 11 to 12 inch thick wall with this light clay straw mixture to achieve the same insulation. So it's not terribly hard to make, it's not hard to excavate, but you've gotta plan for bigger walls. Aircrete is a structural load bearing material so long as it's compressive and in a direct push on the aircrete and never uh, at an angle because aircrete can easily break uh, 
and that's why we put reinforcing fabric on the outside so the aircrete is like a fiberglass coated foam core door or even sheetrock for example the inner material is actually pretty soft and fragile but when you apply the outer coating then it becomes a formidable building material just like a good inch thick sheetrock with good paper on either side is actually strong enough to stand on but without the paper it becomes worthless a foam sheet of course would be worthless for a front door it wouldn't withstand any real pressure uh, and it would fall apart. But when you put either wood or fiberglass on the outside of that foam core door, you now have a very substantial product that is suitable for building. And in the same way, aircrete has to have reinforcing fabric put on it. Now, the light clay straw mixture, however, it is not load bearing. You need to put up posts, you need to build a framework, something that supports your walls and your roof. So it's more like an infill insulation material. And you can put up posts, you can put boards on either side, and then fill it with your, your, your wet uh, clay straw mixture. You can pack it into the form and then let it dry for a while. When you take off the forms, what you have is a natural building material uh, that you can actually apply plaster to. So it's actually not an excessive amount of work but you do have to plan to build your walls twice as thick as normal to achieve a decent insulating value. Now, straw, of course, is not always available, whereas for aircrete, Portland cement right now is available worldwide uh, almost without question anywhere. So if you're in an area where you can get straw, that's great. Uh, straw has gone up in price enough, so honestly the price of building with a clay slip building and making a one foot thick wall versus a six inch thick aircrete wall, for example, you know, it's close enough that, uh, again, aircrete may win for convenience sake because you can simply call, place an order, and have it delivered right to where you need to mix it, or you can go pick it up anytime, anywhere. Whereas in this area, straw is just not readily available. And when it is, by the time you factor in the shipping costs, uh, it's almost equal in price to what it would cost to build with aircrete. So financial-wise and time-wise, aircrete makes more sense. Now, we actually have built a small home uh, using uh, light clay and pine needles because pine needles are something are, that are particularly abundant here in East Texas. And so we gave it a try and it worked just fine. In fact, that would even lead me to believe that perhaps any small or hollow stemmed plant could be gathered up and used to build with, um, perhaps even reeds, anything that's abundantly available. So it's a natural building system whenever you're building with the clay straw system but you've got to have timbers, you've got to have poles, you've got to have something to support your roof and your walls. In addition to putting posts up to support the roof and support the walls, if you look at some of the old architecture in England and other places, you'll see a wooden strip that runs across the wall. And it's painted up, it's plastered, you can't tell what that wall is made of. It could just as well be limestone or anything, but it looks just as good as a conventional wall. But the reason you see the strips on the wall is that it supports the straw uh, from being able to move or fall out of place because during really bad weather or when walls get bumped hard, if there's nothing to support that infill, the infill could actually be loosened or knocked out of place. And so in addition to your post timbers, you have to include some form of reinforcement across the structure to give a little hand, helping hand to keep the straw in place. So a very old building technique, very beautiful in a lot of ways, um, but perhaps in today's day and age, not necessarily as practical. If built in a round shape, such as cylinders, arches, and domes, can easily withstand the, the wind force of an F5 tornado. And so again, Air Creek kind of comes out ahead in the stability area in this case. So again, for just simply ease of application, quickness of building, you know, just convenience in general, as well as basic affordability over buying straw in, I choose Aircrete as the winner here. But if you're in a location where straw is available, then by all means use it. If it's free, if it's cheap, it's available to you, then clearly straw could potentially be the winner for you. Now, of course, having straw walls, it is possible for pests to work themselves into the walls and begin to live inside your walls or work their way through the walls and get in. And whereas with aircrete, pests really aren't an issue. 
a clay slip straw wall is reasonably fireproof, but like in a forest fire, it will burn. It will get hot enough to combust and char on the inside, whereas typical Portland cement is stable to about 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And so there's, again, another advantage to aircrete. You know, aircrete is simply heated, crushed limestone. It's, it's non-toxic. It makes a very healthy house to live in. Whereas if you're buying straw, you probably need to be aware that most of that straw is heavily laden with pesticides as well as Roundup and other commercial chemicals that are put into industrial agriculture. And so while I don't really believe it imposes a hazard to live in, I don't believe that it off gases, there is that issue when handling it. So it's not absolutely non-toxic unless of course you have access to truly organic stock.